Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Time to discuss further into applications of integrals and now go over uh, example three of the arc length uh, video series. Basically, and cover this example, which states set up an integral for the length of the arc of the hyperbola xy equals one from the point one one to the point two and a half. And part B says use Simpson's rule with n equals 10 to estimate the arc length. And the reason we're going to use Simpson's rule is because the integral we're going to get is pretty complicated and may not even have a, a explicit uh, integral. So it's better to do just the approximation. So uh, basically this first function for part A, this function x, y equals 1 since we're going from point 1, 1. If we rearrange this, this just equals to 1 over x right here. Yeah, so this is just one over x or x power negative one right here. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how you write it. And the graph just basically looks like it's x, y. So we're only, only dealing from uh, point one, one to point two and a half. So that looks like something like this. This is one and it goes something like, uh, let's graph it like that. So this is our uh, two, this is up to one and this point right here is two and one and a half and here's one one and we're trying to find out this curve length across and this is our y equals one over x function or x y equals one anyways anyways yeah going now to solve this uh this basically the curve length recall yeah recall the arc length formula arc length formula which I covered in my earlier videos uh, so arc length formula and that one is right here L is equal to and again this is our L right here the length of, over there so L is equal to the integral and then it's from 1 to 2 here 1 to do of square root 1 plus dy over dx squared uh, dx right here and so we have to find out what the dy over dx is. So we know y is equal to 1 over x equals to, well, x power negative 1. I write this easier to take the derivative. So dy over dx is equal to, put this down, negative 1. And this goes minus a power. So x negative 2 equals to negative 1 over x squared right here. And now when we will throw this inside, we get... We get L is equal to integral from 1, 2, up, yeah, and then square root 1 plus, put this in here, the negatives, well, they, uh, the, when you square a negative, it just becomes positive anyway. So 1 over, and then this x squared, x power 4. So that's how that looks like, dx. And if you want to simplify this further, multiply both sides by top and bottom by x divided by, uh, uh, yeah, x power 4 divided by x power 4. And you get basically, you could also write it like this. This becomes x4, and x4 cancels here, but you're also dividing by x4, so you'll have a square root x4, which cancels, and you're just left with x squared. So this whole thing divided by x squared dx. That's just a different way of rewriting it. We'll just deal with this. And anyways, this is, well, basically part A right here. So part A is just write the integral of the length of the arc. And as you can see, it's pretty complicated. 1 plus 1 divided by x4 all square root. And this one's pretty complex and difficult to evaluate. So that's why we're going to just use Simpson's rule to estimate the arc length. So let's go to part B. So, so if we recall the Simpson's rule, which I went over in my, la in my earlier video, so recall... Simpson's rule right here. What this equals to is basically the integral from a to b of f of x dx is roughly equal to Simpson's rule with 10 intervals or s of n and this equals to delta x over 3 and then we have f of x 0 plus 4 f of x 1 plus 2, f of x, 2, and then plus 4, f of x, 3, and it keeps following this exact pattern of 4, 2, 4, 2, so it goes 4, 2, 
4, 2, 4, 2, etc. keeps going on and on until we finally have f of x and minus 2 plus 4 f of x and minus 1. Then the last one is just f of x. Yeah, f of x uh, n. So the first ones are 1 as coefficients, then we have 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, and then we get 1 at the last one as well. And again, where delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n. So just it's just equal with sub interval. So what we have right here is we're going to approximate the function f of x equals 2. So that is this function or this, this one right here. Let's we'll deal with this one right here. So what we have this is square root. 1 plus 1 over x4, you can write it the other way like I showed, or just leave it like this. So we'll just deal with this, and then our b is equal to, our b is equal to 2, a is equal to 1, and that's just basically the, from the integral, so from integral from 1 to 2, or a, a to b. And then our delta x right here, or actually our n, n equals to 10, that's what we're given. And delta x is equal to, well, b minus a, which is going to be 2 minus 1 over 10, which equals 1 over 10, which equals to 0.1. So that is what our delta x is. So what we have now is L is roughly, or yeah, L, the length is roughly equal to S of 10, which equals to 0.1, which is delta x divided by 3. Then we have f of one, that's our, this is our x zero, and we keep adding point uh, one to it. So we have four, 1.1 plus two, f of 1.2 plus four, f of 1.3, keeps going on and on until we get two, f of 1.8 plus four, f of 1.9, and then the last one, f of 2. And when you sum all this up, I've made an Excel sheet right here. So here's an Excel sheet I have with basically x, i, so 1, 1.1, 1, 1, 1. 1, 1.2, so it all the way to 2. Then I have f of x, i here, as you can see, is just equal to square root 1 plus 1 divided by uh, x, i to the power of 4. And then we just keep going down, etc. And then this one is based on the pattern. I have this is just equals to the left one, and this one's gonna be four times it, two times, four times, two times, four times, two times, fxi. And then I sum up this whole thing. So that is just a sum of this whole thing. And then finally, I go here, which is uh, this is going to be this this number multiplied by point 0.1, which is delta x, and divided by 3. So we get this answer, 1.1321, and we get L is uh, roughly equal to 1.1321 right here. I'll stop here. And in fact, if you use... Yeah, if you use a computer, uh, more advanced computer algebra system, you'll find out that this uh, Simpson's rules, in fact, for this case, is accurate to four decimal places. In fact, this, yeah, this is accurate up to four decimal places. So, if you were to use a more advanced. Um, you have to four, up to four decimal places. If you were to use a more advanced approximation method or a computer etc to go more in depth into it you'll you'll see that this number is accurate and up to it and then it, it strays away from the 038 etc so this is accurate up to here anyways that's all for today you'll feel learn from this a pretty interesting example on just just to show how to use simpson's rule without not necessarily dealing with integrals now we're just dealing with well just any function here in this case we're finding the length of a curve using the arc length formula. Anyway, that's all for today. If you learned, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.